uh, go back again now we will continue today as well we try to finish it off uh, um, this uh, queue today in fact we discuss about this Gamini Fonseca case right I think you remember that now right uh, another aspect taken by the um, the uh, respective body uh, to protect customers from uh, establishing a credit counseling center right uh, <coughs> what is the brand name for credit counseling center is what you call Upadeshana. Now, this was uh, initiated by Sri Lanka Banks Association. You know, there are some uh, Sri Lanka Bank Association mean uh, that association is established by the bankers, right? It is not the association of professional bankers. This is something else. Now, Sri Lanka Banks Association, as yes, we call <coughs> SLBA, establish a credit counseling center um, as a social initiative so it just started in 20 uh, june uh, january 2009 at the center for bank studies at rajagiri now who are the target uh, group of credit counseling center now the people who are you know financially distressed uh, distressed persons now they may uh, have some problem with uh, or inability to pay their obligation they take a loan now they are good people right these these remember the credit counseling center treating uh, the people they are they are not treating the people who are willful defaulters now some people you know they they have some problems actual problem uh, they have some financial problem so uh, they may not aware about the banking products and things like that so therefore uh, <coughs> remember uh, this council try to uh, help them right the center try to help them now the issue is here uh, uh, action plans to uh, now <coughs> they we come up with some sort of a workable solution Right, some they come up with some workable solution uh, to uh, for customers' grievances, right? It pertains to credit. Now, now they will in sometimes they can talk in behalf of the client with the respective uh, financial organization, right? So they will support, right? Uh, free of charge, of course, right? And remember, so these are the. Uh, <coughs> Uh, another initiative taken by the uh, authorities to protect customers uh, providing them free counseling free advice right uh, to discuss certain uh, issues what they are uh, uh, facing with respect to credits or any other financial matter and they may come up with some workable solution <coughs> okay right now so there's another one then in there's another thing is it is not in your handout but you can just put it down you don't want to write everything now another one i have quoted uh, after i have given to you now we have we have a lot of people are dealing with uh, payment cards now now when you dealing with payment cards now the central bank earlier <coughs> make a request from the uh, respective financial institution uh, if you can have a sms uh, alert facility for electronic transactions now now they have sent it through uh, as a uh, as a as a guideline as a direction right for all the financial institution whenever you do some transaction whether withdraw the money <coughs> sorry withdraw the money from atms or deposit the money to atms or we do some transaction with merchants and immediately you get SMS alerts saying that you have done a transaction, so on. So that also protect the security or make the confidentiality of the banking sector by the customers. As also now you know they now um, we are now not using the electronic chip, uh, sorry uh, the uh, magnetic card. Now we are going for. Uh, in fact, we have changed to electronic chip. 
that is eme basis right so but rather than that is sms alert is now you can write down under the council in expected you can say sms alerts for people uh, to customer property because then customers aware if somebody has taken your money or if you are confirming your deposits or confirming your withdrawal so with the transaction even though some malpractices also can frauds also can be reduced to that you can just put sms alert system adapted by banks okay right now up to now what we have discussed now we have discussed now we are in the process of discussing uh why uh, we need to protect customers right now we have taken we have discussed uh, uh from the last sunday as well as on last friday pe uh, people who missed that last friday please go through the recorded version and i think you will get some more information right so we discuss under the customer protection these are the area what are the areas we have discussed we discuss ombudsman who is an ombudsman what is an ombudsman role and things like that then we discuss in detail the deposit insurance and liquidity support scheme that's the second one then we further discuss about the customer charter the importance of customer charter in detail then we discussed financial mis-selling that was started on last friday then under that we discussed what are the regulations available in locally to deter financial mis-selling as well as the international way. Then we discuss under that also uh, the importance of customer education and the <coughs> importance of financial literacy and the importance of financial inclusion to address all these issues. Then we discuss about, uh, finally, we discuss about uh, last Friday, la <coughs> finally, we discuss about uh, what is duty of confidentiality then today we discuss another two one is a credit counseling center and the other one is basically sms alert system now these are the, some of the initiatives taken by the respective bodies to protect practices banks and other uh, regulatory bodies and other people to protect the customers right protect the customers clear right now now we're we'll going to discuss next step <coughs> that is what you call to maintain the soundness of financial institution we need to protect customers but also we need to maintain the soundness of financial institution why the financial institution you know the financial institution you know they are performing a lot of uh, uh, a lot of functions to the development of the country's economy Right, financial intermediaries dealing with transaction international businesses right <coughs> support the government initiatives all because therefore we need to uh, we need to uh, basically uh, uh, maintain the soundness of this financial institution right now otherwise it have a bad impact so let's look at it now what action taken by the regulator banks and other authorities authorities to protect the soundness of financial institution right let's take one by one okay first one i think most of you are aware about the parat execution you know parat execution mean uh, parat is a latin word right uh, in uh, parat in latin we call uh, uh, De uh, danish word right we call them as uh, immediate uh, sale something like that right okay so you know the what are the parat execution how many of you heard about uh, parat execution can tell me can anybody tell me how many of you are aware about the parat execution huh? can anybody knows what is parat execution banks are very uh, heavily use it now, but these days we have some problem i will tell you the problem also uh, people who are doing law <coughs> also must be aware what is parat execution anybody is aware about parat execution huh? no right i will explain don't worry okay now let me explain what is parat execution, right? Uh, right. Now, parat execution is the recovery of loans by banks. 
and there's a specific act we call 4 of 1990 uh, and after there are some amendments now now suppose if you give a loan to a customer now if the customers not gave back the uh, the required installment agreed installment so banks is going to give a problem why if you go to the normal civil law it take years and years to uh, hear that case right then because banks has given loan from the depositors money the bank cannot wait till the court's fee or low court uh, case is over right so therefore bank has to execute the mortgage they usually keep it and collect the money and settle the uh, loan right so that is what you call parate execution right just give me a minute okay right now uh, the recovery of loans by banks special provision act 4 of 1990 now that's a law dealing with parate execution now <coughs> now this law has uh, there are some amendments to the act in 2011 number one of 2011 so banks have restricted to exercise parate rights to recover the loans defaulted only if such loan is amount is more than 5 million rupees now earlier remember before 2011 uh, suppose you are given a loan under parate especially the housing loan you can easily respect to the amount even for 200,000 300,000 400,000 1 million 2 million you you can recover using parate execution but there are some amendments to the act of 4 of 1990 and that act is uh, said you can execute it you can execute it, the parate execution right that mean more than 5 million defaulted loan right more than 5 million worth now what is the procedure is usually happening uh, there is a procedure to be followed now suppose you send letters and you have the customers no response bank communicated to them first if there's no response so bank need to take a decision so bank try to communicate with customer there's no payment or nothing communicated what happened usually the procedure is this right i'm simply telling you the procedure the respective now the credit department will take action usually the credit committee will take actions to file actions against the customer under parati so then the credit department or the credit uh, uh, committee right the respective people who usually put the dgm credit or somebody put in the board paper to the uh, put into the uh, prepare a board paper and put it to the execute this property right then the board approval then it goes to publish three newspapers single english Tamil, right and there's some given some time i think the 14 15 days then still customer can come if not response they put the publish and then also the gazette it you need to gazette also right gazette it now we are going for a sale open sale Right, you go for sales and people who can take it by the auction. Right, but there's a procedure to be followed. You know, I don't think the examiner will ask from you the procedure, but they will test you the procedure from your low class. But that is how it happened. Right now, suppose you have tried without going to the court as a bank can sell and then recover the capital plus capital plus interest or any other dues about these court cases and all and the, if there's any balance can give it to customer right so bank can take that initiative without going to the courts but in the meantime customer can go to the courts and can get some injection but but usually uh, it, it's a bank's duty to execute that plan and then recover the money otherwise you can understand no banks given who's money? the customer's money again okay, the depositors money so therefore it is a it is a duty of a bank to recover that money. so the act given to facilitate that to protect the 
financial institution. And then there's another amendment in 19, 2011. Now, now, say issue the amount of loan. What is the amount of loan defined? What do you mean by uh, uh, by uh, basically the uh, 5 million? Now, we say 5 million. Whether 5 million inclusive of uh, uh, interest or without interest. Now, in, in you know, the recovery of loan, uh, Special Provisions Amendment Act, that is uh, 4 of 1990, then they come up with month of 2011 for maximum defaulted amount is 5 million. That loan amount is not clearly clarified whether it is inclusive of uh, uh, loan as or maybe the principal amount. And then at number 19 of 2011, clarify <coughs> that position, 5 million is not inclusive of what? Not inclusive of interest. Is a principal amount. Okay, principal amount. Clear now? I hope you understood. Right. Then, but prior to 2005, there's another one. Now, say there's a mortgage, you know, there are some people who mortgage third parties. Right? The so third party. Now, in prior to 2005, the banks could exercise priority rights even if the mortgage property was owned by party other than the borrower. Now, suppose there's a guarantor put the money, we can execute the priority execution, not only the owner of the land or building, but the other people, the guarantor's money or property also we can take. But that again, in 2000. There's a decision given by the court, Supreme Court, the case again, Ramachandran versus HNB. This is a very famous case. Who's that? Ramachandran versus HNB. They, the decisions given by the uh, court, you cannot, you cannot remember, uh, you cannot execute the uh, uh, Parat execution for the third party mortgages. Right for your guarantor property, you cannot mortgage. Only you can mortgage the debtor itself, himself. Right, only the person who took the loan, his property only you can. Clear now, understood. So that's for the case in the case, famous case in Ramachandran versus HNB is a very famous case in your uh, law paper. And then again, there's a sub subsequent court uh, given judgment, again the HNB versus Jayavardhana, where it was held that part execution can be exercised against the property mortgage by a director of a company to which the loan was granted. But even though the director become a uh, property uh, guarantor, because he's director of uh, for that particular company, he can execute the mortgage uh, for art execution, right? But not the individual, but he is work as a director for an organization and is loan given, taken for her, then the Javardana's property can be considered as uh, his uh, company property. So therefore, he can uh, execute for art, right? But now these days, there's an issue. Can anybody know the issue about the Parate uh, execution? Can anybody know about what is the present situation? What is the present issue faced by banks with respect to the Parate execution? Okay, before that, have you got understood what is Parate execution? I need a feedback from you. Please, huh? have you now know what is Parate execution? Now, Parate execution is why we are studying because it is we need to protect financial institution because somebody has taken the money and not paid the money and we have if you file an action we have to wait and wait and wait and years and years so bank cannot do, carry out their business because bank given whose money customers money so therefore bank have a mechanism to as provided they go through a, a real procedure they in a position to recover the money from the customer right <clears throat> that is what all these things have you understood now 
about parat execution please tell me i need a, i i need to go further i i need your confirmation you understood or not tell me ado okkadu have you understood yes or no budida right i don't want to quote people name no no huh? okay clear the no not yet if you want i will ask i will uh, tell me i will re, uh, tell you again ashani is okay ashani okay right kaushalya right okay kiran okay i i need at least two three samples right okay mohammed you are okay no mohammed right okay right so right now we have a issue now what is that issue about the pertaining to uh, 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 hnb case we are a small issue now the issue comes with sumudu sanjeevani nanakara versus hnb all case with hnb i don't know why right so now this sumudu sanjeevani nanakara put a case again hnb versus ken now they say now the issue comes this 5 million case now what the arguments and the, and the supreme court gave the uh, judgment favor of sumudu sanjeevani now banks have a little disadvantage procedure now to executing the uh, property uh, under mortgage so bank try to slowly in you know, try to recover from the customer without go going to the courts now what is this issue now i will tell you that issue listen to me very carefully now what is the maximum amount uh, we can file action against the customer the principal amount is they have taken more than 5 million now the some some smart customers also now they are not going to take a loan more than 5 million right they may ask only 4 million sometimes why because they are here we are they can't bank cannot execute the parat right under 4 5 million no so they can have enjoy and file action not pay things like that may be a possibility so therefore willful customers default customers come and ask uh, 4.5 million loan with actually he need around 6 7 million but he want he asking only 4.5 million then we as bankers must tell them why you ask 4.5 million where are you going to fund the balance he said i have money and my money so you have to check whether his money is available otherwise what happen he is try to willfully try to default knowing that you cannot execute parate less than 5 million so it is our duty to give more than 5 million in that kid and happy then now what 5 million so make it into 5 million right that's another issue now the issue comes with samudu uh, sumudu saint sanjeevani nanakar versus hnb is like this now what is his lawyers argue now say a guy who took 8 million right now say for an example i'll, I'll give you two cases mr a took a loan from the bank for 8 million right a uh, man b took a loan from the bank is 4 million a guy who took a loan for 8 million a guy who took a loan b is only 4 million now a is continuously paying their installment right and he took 8 million then he paid 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 now his balance is 4 million bank capital balance is 4 million right but b has not paid at all now we have fully uh, fully default the loan even not paid any cents now what we do as bankers we file action against the a because he is under how many million above 5 million right Now this fellow, four million, we cannot execute the loan, uh, execute the parate. Why he has taken four million? So that's the issue we are facing. So the judgment given in that case, favor of a uh, sumudu against the as I mentioned is A. Now we have an issue. We need to clear that issue. Right? There is an issue about the parate. 
understood clearly now. There's a logical, no? there's a logic, no? Now, because of I took 8 million, right? I pay 3 million, I have balance of 5 million. For that day, we file actions against me. I mean, go for execution of Parati. Because even though I pay 3 million, there's some problem I have faced. So, Mudu Sanjeev really has some problem because he took a say, for example, 8 million. Now, this balance, capital balance is uh, 5 million, right? Okay, 5 million. But we file actions against the Sumuju's property. But another guy, we Samarasekara, will say, example, he took a 4.5 million loan from HNB or from, from one bank. We cannot execute, he will not pay any cents. Any sense he has not paid, any installment not paid. But we cannot execute Parati. How unfair are they? That is the, that's the case. Uh, rational. Logic. He said, I, I have paid. Now you cannot uh, file actions against Samarasegara. But to, even though I pay 3 million, you have to take actions against me. And Freeman Faisi, you see, it's, it's have a value point, no? So the judgment given by Mr. Abru and uh, there are three judges given a judgment in 2017 or somewhere against failures of Sumudu Sanji. Now banks have a problem. If you go with to the again with the execution of Parate for uh, people, they co can court the same case. Clear, no? So that's the issue. Okay. You, you raise this question when you are anybody who is dealing with the uh, law. So please raise, don't quote me, right? Please raise this with your uh, laws, uh, sir, and get more clarification on that. Right? Okay. That's I, I just give, I don't want to give you all these things, but I'll just give you some, uh, some food for thought. Right? Now, why I'm telling you all this? Because we are discussing now protections of uh, uh, protections of financial institution. It is important. Why again? There is a case, right? This is your case in your exam, 2014 September. Financial clients management. Can what is the answer? Parat execution is applicable for. What's the answer? Right. What may be the correct answer? I think easily you can. This is our photo for 2014. Question paper, question. What is the answer? Anybody? Please come. B. Ah, B. So all defaulted loans in excess of rupees 5 million. Simple, no? Two marks. Right, good. Now I'll give you a question. Right? I'll give you a question. What is the answer for this? My model question. What's the answer? B. Uh -huh. B. B. Uh, I, I, okay. Now let's look at it again. Right. Carefully. Right. So what may be the answer for this day? What is the act with co act which covered parent execution? Huh? What? What will be the correct answer? Simple. A. Uh -uh. A. 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 B. C. So, D. C. 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 Why you say C? Yeah, correct. What answer is correct? But now, but there are some subsequent amendments to that, no? So uh, the latest amendment only one of 2011 and subsequent amendments only they put it to uh, 5 million. Then again 14 of 2019 they put another amendment. So then you have to be careful in your writing so, uh, thinking answer don't jump to a conclusion. They say debt recovery act 4 of 1990 and its amendments. If you delete this to uh, 2011 and its amendments, right? Now, don't jump to a conclusion. What you say correct, but after that, there may be a amendments. That is how we make it 5 million and principal amount 
right? Okay, so the debt recovery, the original act is 4,004 of 1990, but there may be amendments, okay? Right, just to, I'll just give you food for thought, right? Not much. Okay, now there's another act. There's another act, right? Uh, we call debt recovery special provisions, act number two of two, uh, 1990. So amended by debt recovery special provisions act. That is not four of 19. It is not four of 1990, but that is what? Nine of 1994. So that also give an extraordinary power to bank and lending institution as defined in the section 30 of the act, you can execute uh, the property or the mortgage without going for any normal law procedure, right? So that law supersedes the Roman Dutch law and civil law ordinance of 1852. That means if you get a loan, so if we can, without executing the property, uh, mortgage or the uh, collateral, without going to the courts. That's also given money for the banks to recover their other loans, right? Okay, so there are two laws available. Uh, for uh, banks to recover the money without going for a normal problem. What is the law in Sri Lanka? Okay, first I'll ask from that. What is the civil law in Sri Lanka? Can anybody tell me what is the civil law practice in Sri Lanka? How you call that? Uh, can anybody tell me what is the law, uh, how you call that uh, normal Sri Lankan civil law? Huh? No idea? We call them as Roman Dutch law. Ape Samani Rati Tiene, civil Nithi Tama, Roman Dutch law. Have I Huga companies, Etogoto, a corporate governs, a Roman business law, a Kuga Kilavati? English law only. But our civil law is only Roman Dutch. Right? Now, apart from Sri Lanka, there's only one country is having the Roman Dutch law. Can tell me that law, which country is practicing the Roman Dutch law other than Sri Lanka? South Africa. South Africa. Very good. Very good. So, you know why you keep quiet? Did we ask the Roman Dutch? Very good. South Africa. Okay, good. Right? So you need to, those are common sense, right? I just asked from you. Okay. Then what are the other, other, uh, other initiatives taken by the uh, government, uh, central bank or as our regulator to uh, control our, uh, maintain the soundness of a financial institution? Right. One, another one is what you call statutory reserve ratio. What is the present reserve ratio? We call them SRR. What is the percentage now? Two uh, percent, right? That you know that no, right? So, so central bank say, okay, bank must have a two percent is adequate. You know what do you mean by a reserve ratio, right? Okay. Then second, uh, I will. If you want to know about the statutory ratio, uh, I will email to you next time. Right, I will email to you. I have written an article in the newspaper. Uh, I will uh, email to you. I will ask uh, uh, IBSL to email to you. Uh, it tells you what is STR, uh, what is uh, statutory reserve ratio. Uh, uh, now, some countries uh, zero reserve ratio. Some countries hundred percent, ninety percent. Right? What is reserve ratio? Uh, how to calculate? How can we use it? What is the history of reserve ratio? Uh, what is the uh, uh, mechanism uh, calculating statutory uh, reserve ratio? How can we use to control the monetary theory? All things I have written, uh, written an article which was already published last year. But I will ask, I will send it uh, next year, next week, definitely. I will send you that prior uh, paper cuts to you to read what it, uh, is talk about the reserve ratio right okay that for you added value so the second part is what you call single borrow exposure now what do you mean by a single borrow exposure 
that means thereby reducing now say the banks is not supposed to give loan to one person right suppose if if the loan given to major portion of your bank portfolio the loan portfolio given to one person if that person collapse you difficult to get the money you know so therefore there is some restriction given by the central bank also individual banks they have their own mechanism but usually according to the central bank direction bank cannot give uh, uh, loans for one accommodation we call them as an accommodation right maximum of how much what is the percentage bank can give right and anybody knows from their from their capital how much they can give for one single person maximum of you are not studying it under survey or commercial bank okay 30 percent right for a group you can give 33 percent maximum loan amount from your capital right thereby you are limiting what your risk risk for what exposing giving one person loan right api dan loan ne ki nata ma deela dibbo te la e yata ge wanne werrot api okkama loan fall you can not so therefore we try to diversify thereby the central bank has given restriction so bank cannot give a uh, maximum amount to a particular customer customer banks also having separate system but the law is the, i mean the directions of the central bank is say 30% thereby so they are avoiding the such risk faced by the individual bank second third one capital adequacy requirements now you know the central bank was requested you know i told you earlier also right uh, sri lankan banks divided into now two one is Uh, sig uh, significantly important domestic bank and significantly not important domestic bank. I told you there are four banks in Sri Lanka considered as important domestically significant important bank, and they are in what are the four banks? Bank of Ceylon, Commercial Bank, People's Banks, and HNB. So, what is the purpose of having their way? They need more extra absorption uh, ratio into capital ratio. So, all banks. Uh, need to be maintained 12.5 but other banks need to maintain 14.5 and 14 percent for uh the two banks that the entire two banks uh bank of ceylon and commercial bank need to maintain 4.14.5 and some uh hnb and uh, uh, people's bank need to maintain 14 percent as capital adequacy ratio but now these days due to covid they have reduced uh 0.5 from the uh other banks and come other uh, significantly important bank bank of ceylon and people's bank is 3 to 14% and other one uh, hnb and 13.5 right that's they have reduced that certain amount okay because of the covid but the usual capital so if you have a capital adequacy requirement mean so bank have enough money to absorb any stress right so that is why there some regulatory requirement banks need to maintain they have always protect what why, why the all things are there because to protect soundness maintain the soundness of financial institution then there's another one i think these are the things you i am not going to explain these things okay i will tell you but you are going to learn all these things to the under uh, either survey or uh, commercial bank what is the liquidity requirement so you as a bank need to maintain we learn three under basel 3 we have a extra liquidity requirement no what is the first one we need to have a 20% of liquidity ratio maintain from your deposits right from your assets then what is what is you have to maintain cash deposits of 2% right and then you need to maintain extra things you, uh, the central bank incorporated under basel 2 we call them as what liquidity coverage ratio and net funding ratio so you will going to learn so there are some minimum liquidity requirement is need to be maintained by uh, the uh, by the prospective bank why because otherwise the bank is face liquidity risk if you have a liquid risk customers not in a position to get the money from the customer uh, from the bank so then what happened 
there may be hahu, there may be bags get panic, that they may go for then run. Right? So therefore, it will spread and it is have a contagious effect. It will uh, damage the entire the banking industry and ultimately impact your financial system stability. Right? If the bank try to withdraw all the money, can bank uh, give? No, no. So therefore, bank must have a certain percentage of liquidity. Right? So that is why central bank has put to maintain the soundness of financial institution, you must maintain certain percentage minimum to fulfill the customer's requirements and other debtors' requirements, other people's requirements. Right? Okay, clear now. So they have given specific percentage, 20% and the capital adequacy, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the liquidity requirement ratio and there are another two uh, specific uh, ratios given for 30% requirement is called capital uh, liquidity coverage uh, ratio as well as debt funding stable ratio, stable ratio for longer term. So there's a two new liquidity requirement introduced by the uh, central bank as per the uh, Basal 3 guidelines. Okay, right. So why all these things to submit in the sound notes of financial institutions? Then, then they may have another directions of NPL provisions. Now the central banks tell how to calculate, how to allocate, uh, how to categorize the non-performing loans, like three months, six months, like that, right? Then based on that, you must allocate uh, provisions according to a SLFRS 9. Now still they have not uh, implemented fully, but because of the COVID, but they are going to increase. That means if you have more NPL, what do you mean by that? So you need to allocate more money from your profits. So then ultimately what happens, your profits comes down because those because of the NPL, you need to provide provisioning, right? Where are you going to provide the provisioning from your profits? Then the shareholders will shout. So that means the bank has to take care, right? Maintain very good <coughs> NPL provisioning. How can you do? have a uh, rigid recovery procedure when you're granting loans to look at it the customers uh, cre credibility you know the six c's and six p's and all these things so you learning on that next one now another important thing is integrated risk management directions now that also issued by the central bank you're going to learn at the commercial bank so you must have the integrated risk management Right, so we have a risk chief risk officer in the bank to look in after all the risks faced by the bank and do some stress tests, uh, identify the risk, take steps to mitigate the risks, and take proactive role uh, to uh, uh, mitigate the bank risk. Right, so we have a credit subboard committee called credit. Uh, integrated risk management uh, board subcommittee also the board level also to uh, look into this aspect whether the bank is maintaining a better risk management structure or the framework right now according to, to uh, the world uh, financial crisis which took place in 2007-8 so one of the reasons they have identified uh, why banks fail because of the banks has not identify a proper uh, risk faced by them they don't have taken any precaution to identify or to mitigate the risk that is one of the reasons why financial crisis took place as a result of that the uh, banks uh, monetary bodies all the world has come introduced a separate uh, specific uh, directions and initiative to uh, to managing the risk of the respective bank. According to the Central Bank of Sri Lanka also sent some directions to the banks so you have to have a uh, different type of risk so you need to maintain. So we also going to discuss a little bit of next maybe next week we are going to discuss prudent risk management how it impact or how it protect the customers i i will discuss about the credit risk market risk uh, operation risk very very briefly right i i am 
going to also discuss and I have a uh, next week I may discuss with you uh, what are the type of free space by the bank, how it impacts the customers, all things we are going to do. We are, we are looking at it, the risk management, respect of customer's point of view, right? Okay, right. So we are going to discuss that part a little bit of next week, right? So the, all, all directions given by central bank, why? To maintain the soundness of financial institution. Next. Now also corporate governance directions, right? Now the corporate governance mean yahapahalani, right? So what do, you, what do you mean by the corporate governance? Again, I want to tell you what to do. I have to tell you, you need to study corporate governance under commercial banking, right? Corporate governance mean how the uh, organization is uh, manage and control. That is simple definition for corporate government. And it will look after the entire stakeholders of the uh, organization. That is corporate governance, right? So the central bank has given corporate governance to the banks. So when you uh, carry out your businesses, these are the way you need to carry out your business. Now, have a good uh, proper uh, board of directors and at their composition and their education level, you know, the expertise level and all so many things, uh, number of uh, uh, directors, whether they are uh, uh, whether they are executive directors or no, executive, non-executive directors, whether they are uh, independent directors, uh, you know, the what board audit, board committee, subcommittees, right? Uh, how, how they look at the future of the banks, uh, the strategies, aspects, all things we look after corporate government. So the central bank has given, right? And in fact, in fact, now, I told you also earlier, the central bank may going to come up with entirely new law, maybe in 2022, early or late 2021. New banking act. So there they have put more attention to corporate governance. They feel it. Bank need to have a better board structure, composition. There are some areas, right? So even now they have given direction, but they want to strengthen more governance. So that corporate governance means the manner in which they have managed then control the organization. That's a simple definition, right? Objective is to look after their uh, uh, sustainable and look after their uh, uh, stakeholders of, of the organization, right? Okay, right. Next. So, they are believing if you organization maintaining a good corporate governance, right, they can maintain, have a better financial institution, sound institution. Okay, right. So these are some of the initiatives taken by the, uh, by the, now we have learned two Buddha. What are the things we have learned? Protections of customers, as well as what actions taken to protect customers and how to maintain the soundness of financial institution for that what actions taken right okay third one because we need to protect the institution from why we need to protect each institution so we put money in our those institutions no? so if something happened to those institutions we also have some problem right so therefore it is a duty of not only to the protect customers and also banks also need to be protect from customers also no why customers the people who take the loan from the bank no if they are not fair so bank have a problem so one way we need to protect customers from the banks as well as banks need to be protect from the customers right okay remember that next one okay let's look at it now the third point now, I think I have, we have discussed uh, all things in the very beginning. Third point, to maintain the stability of the financial system. Right now, I think you know what is meant by a financial system. Now, the financial system is consist of financial institution, financial infrastructure, uh, regulators, financial institution, like that. You know, the financial system, those are the component of the financial system. So we need to have a stability of this financial system, right? 
okay what actions what actions taken by the regulators or the respective people with respect to financial system stability so especially the payment system now you know the banks are deal deal with payments and customers are deal with what checkbooks uh, credit cards you know so transaction may be through electronic right we do a lot of payment non cash basis now that is our drive today you know so then we have to believe when when i give you a check right it's it should be treated as a money if i deposit the money i deposit the check in the bank and it got to return so people lost the trust of that instrument right when i pay something from my card credit card assuming the real money is going to come if you are not sure with my credit card nobody is going to uh, fulfill my uh, requirement if i issue a card right so for that we must maintain the stability of the especially the financial system especially smooth handling of money and payments right now let's look at it what uh, action or what initiatives taken by certain of uh, uh, authorities to maintain the stability of the financial system okay what is the so there are some institution established by the uh, by the uh, authorities i mean the uh, regulators is called cri right okay before that uh, who, who is how do you mean uh, what do you mean by a, a regular buyer borrower why do you well uh, uh, okay first what do you mean by regular buyer uh, borrower how what what is irregular borrower in the bank it terms how you call the irregular borrower can anybody tell me who is an irregular borrower if the exam is asked from you who is an irregular borrower how to define huh? what do you mean by irregular borrower i would not can so you usually call them as uh, those are who have not paid back their loan installment for more than 3 months or more that is how you usually technically define right the customers or borrowers who have not paid back their loan installment for 3 months or more than that that is how we call borrower irregular borrower right now uh, why borrower could have become bad what is the reason customers to become bad borrower right it can anybody right there are some willful defaulters hitavata daya paharanda harunda right or maybe due to second type of borrowers because of uh, compelling circumstances beyond their controls like uh, you know this because of this golden uh, gobel challenges and and some lost of markets and due to natural calamities and over due to uh, this type of pandemics right okay so these are uh, borrower could have become bad right as maybe or sometimes uh, second or third party guarantors also can they become uh, uh, okay right now then if we have not properly identify of these people now what happened then? right now say uh, if customers buy take a loan from a bank right and be in default and go to another bank and ask for another loan because he is good his uh, job is good ha huh? everything is nice right you have it up uh cre payment capacity to show to the bank they take another loan from x bank now we have around not banks to around 20 or banks no this person may go to every bank and take loans and default then what happened then the system won't run 
right? So the stability is not there. So therefore, there must be a system to identify such people. Now that is the one of the uh, initiatives taken by the manage, uh, by the uh, regulators to establish the institutions called what CRIP stand for credit, right? Credit, but information bureau. That's called simply we call them as CRIP. Now the CRIP actually. Uh, initiated by uh, during in August 1990 uh, during that time the president and the prime minister uh, at time the uh, by the prime minister and the uh, minister of finance is you must be knowing is none other than B.B. Vijayatunga right during his time only this uh, exam don't ask all this I just tell you for no right uh, initiated uh, with the initiative taken by the uh, during that time uh, uh, Mr. One Mr. Fernando is a deputy governor uh, of the central bank is ultimately became the first chairman of the group uh, and also the present uh, our uh, one of the deputy governor, Vijay uh, Vardhan, also CEO of that early CRIP. Right? Okay. Now, uh, so what the CRIP's role is, right? What is a CRIP role, right? What is the main objective? Now, CRIP object created to obtain CRIP. Is government for people, right? And the third, you can say, to facilitate distributions of credit to all sectors of the economy and it has financial integrity and stability. What that integrity? Now, nobody can't cheat the bank. So, what happened? What, what Krim is doing? So, is collecting information from all the banks supposed to provide the information to the Krim. And they are whether good or bad customers, if a customer take a loan, right? Or so all the information is feed to the crib, and the crib will provide all the customers, credit worthiness, and all good and the bad things to the member institution. So then if a customer comes to collect the loan or take a loan, so we usually check the crib and see whether the credit worthiness of this customer. So what I told you earlier, the won't arise because of establishing of a CRIP, right? Now, honestly, CRIP therefore fill an information and information gap, right? Between lending institutions and borrowing, borrowers. So CRIP is filling the gap, information gap about customers as well as the institution, right? And uh, so, so the CRIP therefore facilitate banks to process the loans of the customer. If they are good customers, because now people have a little, uh, little try to behave integrally because they know if you, uh, if you are not uh, pay your uh, loan what you have taken, so you may be indicated in the CRIP. When you go for another loan or for another bank or not the same institution, you will get recorded. You are not paid and arrears and things like that. So thereby, uh, banks will facilitate to understand, identify the good customer and a bad customer. Otherwise, the systems, financial system is not doing well if you have a, if you not have a system like this, if you not have a institutions like this. Right, so it, it's, it's now. Remember, Crip won't tell you uh, now. There's a lot of misunderstanding. Crip is not tell you not to give loans, right? Crip also so decisions taken by the bank whether to give loan or not is a bank's duty. Crip tells you the this is the position, this is the creditworthiness of the customer. Granting a loan is up to you, 
right now lot of the people think because of crib bad we uh, we are not giving the loan right so crib remember tell you a guideline right so decisions need to be taken by the individual bank right so therefore crib indirectly right now say customer took the loan not pay the system did collapse so therefore crib remember provide support the financial system stability right that's also uh, thereby also crib protect the customers also indirectly right because the money is given whose money depositors money right okay now i think you understood the importance of crips now who are the if i ask you questions like this who are the, if if the examiner asks you can anybody tell me the answer will you i like to hear this answer right just use your common sense right okay if i ask you questions like this who are the borrowers of crip who are the, sorry who are the customers of the crip can tell me write down who are the customers of crip can name one or two three people ha huh? can name bogan financial institution good then hari okay kiran also put name same right one correct financial institution who are the other people who are the customers who are the who are the customers of a bank or target market sometimes we call huh what are the people only financial institution then leasing right. company sir yeah okay okay now financial institution if you say is covered na huh? okay good now if i say now some students say financial institution so uh, leasing company is also covered under that okay that's accepted good answer but is covered under financial institution what else who is who are the other customers of a crib individual source of cash yeah customer seems at the borrowers no borrower seems because uh, he can take the iv for no individual reports he can take to show his credit to us corporate companies yes good very good corporate companies individuals right who is who is some more thing is busy are we are we look at it only the uh, borrower other than the borrower are we going to look at it them what other people may look at it huh? now say you come for a loan right what i am checking first thing whether you have taken a loan who oh, otherwise you have given guarantor to the other loan right so we may check the guarantor also no it's another type of customer no it's not the direct borrower but the guarantor also you can consider are you there have guaranteed loan for others we need to consider right what is right but remember if you say financial institution uh, don't don't open it then you have to say what financial institution the member institution right member institution right member is it because you have to be a member to get this information right i think now you have some idea about uh, the uh, about the uh, crib right now why i am telling you all this thing uh, the examiner yeah uh, so that we will see the questions later on right okay so it's not moving now let's uh, it is not in your hand out putta but i will uh, uh, i will uh, explain to you a little uh, with more details right now what are the functions of these are the objective right if the examiner asks you the objective remember you need to give these info objective but there are other functions also right okay these are the objective if you put if you want to put you put another objective generate reports relating to individuals sme and corporate bodies right 
So that's the main objective. Reports on what? About the customer's credit worthiness, right? Next, the, we look at in the next point is the functions of the credit. Now, sometimes the examiner can ask from you the objectives as well as the functions. Now, don't get confused. If the examiner asks you the functions, these are the functions. Objectives provide a conducive environment, make it uh, uh, creating integrity uh, and stability, encourage the responsibility of the people to pay their dues and all things, right? Okay, provide reports. Right. These are the functions. Collect, collect, and synthesis, trade, and other information, right? All you collect, all the information about the customers. Then uh, provide those information uh, to respective people in forms of persons or I reports, individual reports, right? So undertake the functions of credit rating and to sell such credit rating to any foreign law local agency. Now they will do, apart from other things, they will analyze your credit pertinence, right? Providing CRIP report for member institutions or request. Maintaining confidential reports of pertaining to a customer lending of banks and financial issues. There may be a, so these things you need to remember, right? One of few things you need to remember, right? And then provide a credit scoring. Now that is the latest one uh, introduced by central, uh, by the, uh, by the CRIP. Uh, now, Still no question asked. I have a strong feeling and mind you, I want to tell you. So uh, just I remember now, uh, we are going to finish my lecture series uh, somewhere around second week of April, right? So we have a, another, uh, most probably another six weeks, right? So don't miss, right? Six weeks, may, may maximum of six to seven weeks we have. So I can cover seven weeks the entire syllabus hopefully right that is why i took some extra classes uh two times right uh, i don't think if i necess if necessary i will ask from another one only one class but i think we can cover so another area we need to cover marketing once we complete this we basically covered everything and also i will discuss with some mock exam right i will give you some mock paper also now your exam is going to be somewhere in early june that's what I heard. Provided the country situation is okay. So we will have to have an exam on somewhere in June. Because that exam, June exam, remember, it is 2021 March exam was extended to June. Right? So uh, the uh, March and April, the last 2020 March and September exam already we concluded in 2021 January. Right? So your exam may be going to start somewhere in June, first week. So we have till uh, till second week of April, uh, we, may, uh, we may have some uh, classes because uh, they want to have some revision classes from entire May. So your exam may be started late May or uh, early, Jan, uh, early June, right? That's need to be remembered. Okay, now this time the examiner can test you from credit scoring because that is a novel thing introduced by you just go through, right? Okay, this is not in your handout, but just just thinking, right? Uh, what is your credit score report? Now, customers can obtain CRIP score report. Customers can get score report. Right, not only uh, the giving the credit worthiness of that customer uh, about the information to the bank. Now, even you can call the credit score report. Right now, credit score is calculated by how you calculate the credit score of your customers. Now, how they calculate based on the information given by the bank. Informations and what am I? They will work it out your credit score, right? Right. So your payment behavior. So how you pay your installment? Uh, how you are an over-indebtedness? You have taken loans from everybody, every bank, or 
some democratic de demographic details, age, gender, all things, right? Utilizations of available credit, right? Inquiries, guaranteed contracts, dishonored checks, all day we look at it. All this look at it and based on these uh, uh, factors, they come up with a credit scoring for individual customer or corporate, right? Now, the, they have, have a three-digit number with ranging from 250 to 900. So, they give some figures, 250 to 900. Now, they work out the credit risk to the lenders. Now, this credit score tells the customer uh, to the bank, this is the risk level of that particular customer. Right? Remember, right? This is similar to your self-inquiry report, that is I report. Credit score also change over time due to, now remember, now this, uh, once you take your credit score, it's not the final one. It can be changed, right? Maybe uh, because of your behavior, it may change. Right. Now, why is your credit score report important? Right? Now, remember, it tells your risk grade. Right, and also it helps you to view your credit score before the lending institution does. Now, if you want to get all this information, please now go to the crib web and you can see all these things. Right, I don't want to give if you want further uh, information pertaining to this, please go to the crib website uh, and take it download from that. But I want to explain. Right. OK, if you want this, uh, I, that's what I don't want to give you. Uh, please, if you want interested about these things, please uh, download it from Crip. It is uh, it available. Right. OK, now, but I want to explain now what is this. Now, Crip score report. Now, there may be a questions can come from Crip score report because it's a new thing. Now, it helps you. Now, the examiner can ask you uh, as a novel initiative, Crip. Uh, introduce a uh, CRIP score report system. Now they will ask how it's important to customers, how it's important for industry, or how it's important to the bank, like that. Now it helps you to your own credit scoring before your lending institution done. You can do it yourself, right? And you help you to minimize the time and cost involved in the credit evaluation process. Now, say for an example, uh, based on your credit rating, you will think how much of money I can take in, right? What is my loan amount or uh, sometimes uh, the maximum amount and things like that. Uh, you can, uh, you can uh, uh, guide and also this helps you to discipline borrower. You have become, once you know, with this your report. You have, you can say you want to be a disciplined borrower, so therefore you are prompt to pay your installment, right? Uh, and at the correct time, uh, how to use my credit properly, not to use uh, for un 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 uh, unwanted things for use for particular purposes. You have taken the loan, credit utilization. Also, they will look at it. Now they will categorize. You are less three uh, categories basically. Say one for uh, now, say uh, very low risk. That means if you are going to uh, earn around uh, the range between uh, here, the, uh, the range between uh, uh, five, uh, 610 to 640. So those are very high, um, good scoring. Right, there's another column. This very very low risk. So so if you earn so much of marks, right? Like that, you are you are categorized based on your risk uh, model, uh, risk uh, score, right? Okay. Now remember, uh, now a customer who can request CRIP score report in addition to the I report. Now, now you can't ask only the script score report, right? So in order to get the script score report, you need to request I report. 
So only is pay 150 rupees for each report. Now for I report for 150 rupees, CRIP score report for 150, that means 2300 rupees. You can collect both I report and the CRIP score report. Right? Only CRIP score report won't, uh, won't be given by the CRIP. You need to collect both reports. Now all these reports will facilitate for you to become a good borrower discipline borrower uh, so space time uh, save time your time for calculations about your credit uh, worthiness and uh, reports and things like that okay i just add something here when i went through the uh, creep report uh, creep uh, uh, creep uh, basically the creep uh, website so this is a new novel thing uh, that they introduce so therefore uh, there may be a possibility they will ask on that area at our uh, mock exam mock question paper we will discuss i will incorporate the questions on this also we can further uh, analyze on that right okay so then uh, so these are the one of the question now you see the exam will ask you from 2017 March. Forget about the first one. What are the main functions of CRIP? Then you need to write the main functions as collect, collate, and synthesis straight, credit, financial information from the categories of persons or bodies of persons. Second one, provide credit and financial information or request to the persons form of I reports. Undertake the functions of credit rating for institutions, uh, providing some research, provide some confidential information. And now uh, you can provide credit scoring as reports as well, right? So please, you need to understand that, right? You need to summarize this. What are the functions and objectives? Other one, create a conducive environment for people to obtain credit, to facilitate distributions of credit to all sectors of the uh, economy and uh, enhance the uh, financial integrity and stability. All are the objectives. Don't get confused with objective and function, right? Now, this question specifically are the function. So then you need to put that. Okay. Uh, so in this is 2019 question see describe the role of the credit information bureau in lending processes right so this question so then you have to talk about much more uh, the role is basically an object then you also can put some of the uh, functions also right if you want you put uh, objectives as well as function if the examiner asks you the role then you can combine but if you examine asks your objective you need to give the objective if the examination asks you a function you need to give a function separately but if you examine asks you the role of a credit information bureau then you can mix it both together both objective and functions clear understood though no? Right? Remember, that is the way that you need to understand the question. If you say role, you can combine objectives and function. But if specifically as one of the objective, you need to write the object. But specifically as the function, you need to ask the function. Okay? Clear? Right. right. Now we learn uh the institution which cover the stability of the financial systems well let's look at it what are the other laws and practices available to uh for maintain the stability of the financial systems now we have a lot of laws put up right for example we have uh, uh credit card scam payments and device frauds if you if somebody is going to uh, uh, do unwanted thing for card payments uh, credit cams scams and all we have a law famous devices for that we can file actions or take actions against that and we have a very very much famous payment and settlement system act number 20 of 2005 where it stands you so many things uh, whether pay all the payments and settlements 
right and the card payment and mobile payment number one of 2013 electronic transactions if you do business through the electronic transaction and those are facilities are available right if the people want to do some electronic business or electronic way of communicating so remember and also you don't want to know all these things at least you need to know about there are some laws on this maybe some of the laws it covered that the law but you as a student who do the scam uh, you study the financial class management you must aware there are some laws to formate to make the financial system stable okay and also the important thing is uh, and also sometimes on-site and off-site supervisions done by the central bank also uh, to maintain the stability of the financial issue and also another important things right now are you aware on this can you issue a check without having the money in your account right okay Earlier, yes, because after uh, there may be amendment to the uh, Act of 2 of 1990, Sections 25, Debt Recovery, Sections 25, Act number uh, 2 of 1990. So they introduce issue of check without a fund is a criminal offense. It's not a civil offense. What do you mean by a criminal offense? Criminal office can do what they are going to do. We need Mary Maho, Mary Mata, that three Mata Rang, Marani, a Dandani, and then the Blue Atara, Barapatala, Varada. Right? So you can immediately take action. Now, if you issue a check without a fund in your account, it's a criminal office. So this is a punishment. Is punishment is not enough, but maybe a think about is a criminal office right why why we make it a criminal office issue a check without having a fund is a criminal office why to strengthen the strengthen the recognitions of check thereby maintain the stability of the financial system clear understood so that is the important things that is why we make it as a, a criminal offense so therefore don't issue a check without having the account so this become a criminal offense so strengthen the financial system stability in the organization uh, in the system right now we learn protections of customers sound maintain the soundness of financial institution and the third one <coughs> protections of oh, 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 oh maintain the soundness of financial system stability next one <coughs> the next one important thing now there are a lot of questions we ask from this area right a lot of questions asked from this area right to what extent you can use the uh, banking system to do all these illegal activities Criminal activity, right? What action taken by the respective regulatory bodies or respective organization to avoid or obviate or reduce the criminal activity concerning money? Right? How banks going to uh, control this? Right? Now, this is pay an important attention after this uh, Obama Bin Laden hit the you know that story after that only all things came because the obama uh, that uh, what you call uh, that uh, usa case uh, all the money has gone through the banking system then not only they find out where they got the money money is sent through the banking system then not only the attention has gone how we can prevent a banking system with support to uh, criminal activity or providing funds right let's look at it now <clears throat> so we need to catch all these people who sending money through the formal systems 
we want to bring to the formal system and also uh, we need to find it out right how we can avoid all these unethical or illegal transaction made through the banking system right now let's look at it what are the important laws in sri lanka so these three laws you must be well aware especially act number 2 right what is the first act three acts there in the sri lanka law the examiner asks you what are the laws prevailing in sri lanka with respect to money laundering uh, with respect to illegal activities so you need to mention these three laws what are these three laws money laundering act number 5 of 2006 what is the other one financial transaction reporting act number 6 of 2006 and terrorist finance act number 25 of 2005 okay so this is very important for you to know and there may be a lot of questions are coming from here even for your banking law as well as for your uh, your uh, sfs as well as of your commercial bank right okay let me now explain uh, some of these things as also we look at some of the questions appeared in our question paper as well okay what do you mean by first thing first thing you know what is money laundering right so what is money laundering now it is a it's, it's a process you know a process whereby the proceeds of crimes are converted into legitimate <coughs> funds using complex transactions affected through <coughs> sorry financial institution right the money laundering is the process of transforming the proceed of crime into uh, ostensibly that means uh, legitimate money or other assets right it can be sneak right modal Banku badde tiya hara ha niti ano kula budal mawatha patkiri me kriya wali tamay yapi kani budal visudhi karne right the money laundering is the process of or oh, if you put it very simple cleaning the dirty money when you send it to the bank it's become clean money it's like a bank's become a laundry right that is why called money laundering okay so so banks not support to do all these activities so therefore banks must come up with actions to prevent these things are happening in the banking system right okay so bank cannot facilitate unlawful activities right? what do you mean by unlawful activities can anybody tell me what is unlawful activity? Can you name unlawful activity? Right? You can say uh, one we recognize as manufacturing, uh, manufacturer, trafficking, import, export, and possessions of dangerous drugs. Also, unlawful activity. You can't keep drugs, narcotic drugs, weapon, without having proper permission. Or maybe some other uh, import or maybe import karana export karana mukut karana first seconds and remember now a lot of people may be not aware offenses against children also illegal active unlawful activity right now activities relating to unauthorized possessions of use of guns firearms you know offensive weapons also unlawful activity uh, so then, uh, also you can say, uh, what is, uh, offenses, uh, connected to, uh, trafficking or smuggling of, uh, persons, violations of customs, uh, uh, ordinance, payments of, uh, devices, fraud act, all are illegal thing. And also exchange control right comes under exchange control act all are we call them as a uh, unlawful activity right okay 
Now, this how the money laundering. Now, don't worry. So you, I don't think you will go ask questions or to that level. But for your understanding only, I've just give this diagram. So how money laundering is taking place? There we have a three uh, layers. We call them as three phases for money laundering cycle. Three stages, right? Just uh, just for the understand purpose only, I'm telling you, right? First, you have some illegal money. You are collected from unlawful activities, right? When you keep this money with the bank, we call it placement, right? Placement. Then, when you send the money to the bank, you withdraw the money from the bank, and you may buy shares. Uh, you may, you know, it it it's 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 you you are a, you deal with the banks with this money in a different activities for different activities. You take a loan and ask them to pay the installment to the banks, right? You buy some uh, assets and ask the uh, bank to pay low uh, install bank to pay uh, behalf of the customers and things like that so that is what you call layering transfer on the bank account of company x you know something like that and to pay this amount to a third party uh, uh, operating a checkbook right so those are we call layering then what happened so then the money you are generating from that you are maybe purchase house cars uh, you know uh, then uh, some properties so this we call them as uh, integrations so therefore money laundering three cycle consists of three stages placement layering and integration that's i just want to tell you how this money laundering is taking place but don't worry at least if the seven asks you what are the three lay of three stages, you have to say placement. Islam away Kaligila bank quota down. That bank will be low state the oil, anti-money laundry laws, financial reporting laws to prevent such placements, to identify such customers. This is this is the money laundering cycle, right? Placement, layering, and integrations. Right. Next. Now uh, don't worry about the placement be physical disposal of cash and placing into the financial system moving the money around the distance of gate from illicit sources and then bring back the wash funds into the mainstream again right don't worry all much on this right now we'll look at it this reason emphasizing the importance of anti-money laundry recovery why we need to emphasize control this money laundering recovery right now money laundering and terrorist finance right now now what do you mean by a terrorist finance i i forget to tell you what do you mean by a terrorist finance terrorist finance be uh, involvement with any person involvement with any person connected to acts linked to terrorist activities or terrorist financing that is what you call terrorist finance any person connected to any activity of uh, linked to uh, uh, or funding of a terrorist activity is called terrorist finance right okay now money laundering and terrorist finance terrorist finance can have an adverse thing if it consequence to the entire world economy community that's the one reason that is why we need to now there may be a question can uh, can ask why uh, why we what are the reasons uh, emphasizing the importance of anti-money laundering requirements why we need to control and second to mitigate high reputational and commercial risk involving in money laundering now are you aware of that the sri lanka one time considered as the country which support money laundering now these days we talk about the other swasalab there uh, why? 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 Because those countries are famous for money laundering. Right? So, therefore, people have 
not recognize those countries. When you do businesses with these countries, they may have a high risk, a high uh, premium, high uh, surcharges. Okay. Second, criminal and terrorists can use the illicit funds to further their illicit illegal activities. Financial institution may suffer as a result of a criminal or terrorist taking charge of their businesses. So they also suffer some businesses, right? So these are the reasons why we need to uh, protect money and laundry, right? Right? Okay. Right, next. Now, now comes the importance. Why we need to, so how banks will protect these things? Right? How banks, how legislations or practices try to avoid all these things happen in the bank, through the banking system. One important fact is to KYC at CDD. Now, to know your customer, banks are expected to have sufficient information about your customer. You need to identify your customer, right? Where the money or sources of income comes to a customer, right? That is why when you go for bank for open an account or open an LP, we'll give them a form. Right? From where are you? What are the sources of income? Then you have to fill certain points. Right? From your job or from your salary or some of your businesses, you need to disclose. Right? Okay? So then you can control to some extent. So sources of fund. For that, we need what? We need KYC and CDD, right? Now, to prevent the use of financial institutions for money laundering and financing and other unlawful transactions, we are request under Financial Transaction Report Act, all the banks need to take, when you open account or do transaction with the bank, to collect KYC and CDD from the customer. So these are make it compulsory by the what is the act under financial transaction reporting act. Now through these documents, what they do, they try to screening the customer to they were involving in any terrorist finance activity. Right? So the, these are the two uh, important instruments or important reports need to be collected from banks under financial transaction reporting at 6 of 2006. Thereby, we can at least to some extent we can control the money laundering or um, some uh, unlawful transaction taking place within the banks. Okay, right now for that we have established. Financial Action Task Force, that is the international body who covered this, right? But don't worry about this much. So we have a if we have established financial intelligence unit, FIU. Actually, this was uh, established in March 2006 under Financial Transaction Reporting Act in 2006. So remember. The FIU is established under Financial Transaction Reporting Act, right? Now, actually, this is initially placed within the Finance Ministry, but now it is shifted to uh, the uh, under the central banks. But FIU work as a separate entity. Okay. Now, uh, what are the FIU? Activities are framed by three regulations, right? If I ask you, if the examiner can ask, what are the laws cover uh, frame under FIU? 
then you have to say three laws. What are the three laws? Terrorist Finance Act, 25 of 2005, the privilege of multi money laundering at 5 of 2006, and financial transaction report, 6 of 2006. So these are the three acts we frame the FIU. Now, FIU, we, apart from checking unlawful activities which are taking place in the banking system, and one of the functions of the responsibility of the FIU is to conduct awareness program, right, about people, about these uh, uh, unlawful or anti-money laundering activities, right? Uh, and apart from that, they may conduct research uh, on uh, AML and uh, CFT uh, trends and provide information to other countries, monitor cross-border uh, currency movement, right? Monitor cross-border currency movement. So that is a huge role played by FIU. You can put under C, uh, you can put D, uh, uh, monitor cross-border currency movements. Uh, and also you can put another uh, another functions of FIU, uh, conduct research, conduct research on AML and safety trends, CFT trends. Okay, further, right, for little more information. Now, FTRA, now 6 of 2006, the, act, the very important act is facilitate to appoint or make it compulsory to appoint compliance officer now who would have responsible for the institutions comply with act of duties of compliance officer right what are the duties of compliance officer and banks need to appoint a compliance officer comes under what act act number 6 of 2006 now, what is compliance officer? Now, compliance officer is job is to looking whether the, your financial institution uh, behave or act according to the rules, procedures, uh, uh, and the rules, procedures, then uh, acts are uh, complied by your organization. Then, tipping off an office. What do you mean by tipping off an office mean? Always this will tell you financial transaction report also facilitate to give some pre-warning if something before something happened that being proactive rather than reactive, right? Financial transaction report or reports will talk about the pre-warning that is uh, prevention as be after before some then reaction, right? Okay, and also report transactions and electronic fund transfers about the value of one million. Now, a customer comes to your bank. Customer comes to your bank with two million. Now, what do you do? Right now, suppose you are in the counter. Customer can come with the two million money to deposit. Open an account. Then you usually pay, give your forms to fill and all. Now, suppose the existing customer comes. This is considered to be the threshold limit. Threshold limit. Right? Now, all the banks are sending the transactions value more than 1 million to FIU. Right? So, that is the threshold value. Report transactions and electronic fund transaction about the value of one million. We have to communicate to head office uh, to FIU. <coughs> Remember, even though we don't know, so the systems will generate, and all this information we send uh, as of CFT, cash fund transfer, and electronic fund transfer uh, form to the as specified by the. Uh, Central Bank uh, FIU unit, right? Through web base, electronically, all the information is go to the FIU, right? Then, suspicious transaction, right? And what 
what do you mean by a suspicious transaction what is the maximum amount of suspicious transaction now say customer comes to you a bit to you with some money now if you feel it make a sack aside the ganu then walk now what you try to do you call manager through the manager you may communicate to your compliance officer then he will tell you what to do and all he will report all these transactions to for you and then if for you may follow up that particular person so the suspicious transaction remember there is no limit even for 500 rupees if you feel it may horakan karala nan genalla tie you can report to fiu so your normal threshold limit is 1 million but if you suspicious any transaction it is irrespective of the magnitude that mean not the amount amount is even small amount but you can complete right and also remember financial transaction report act facilitate to open setting up a fiu so we discuss what are the functions that follow and opening and operating of account under fictitious name also prohibited under ftr so disclosure requirements and maintain confidentiality information some extent also covered under ftr and what are the penalties of violations about this also explained under financial transaction reporting act so therefore financial reporting transaction reporting act therefore play an important role in obviate criminal activities taking place in the banking system right so you need to know about especially the ftra act okay now let's look at it right let's look at this now what are the okay now if the examiner asks from you what are the three type of reports what are the three type of reports banks need to send to fiu what are the three type of reports the bank usually send to fiu those are sent through electronically through the web base what are the three type of reports what are the three type report we call them as ctr eft electronic fund transfer cash transfer and suspicion transaction reports right these are the three type of reports usually sent by uh, by the banks right to fiu right now a uh, suspicious transaction report only need arises right but all other reports uh, more than 1 million and other in terms of electronic forms or cash form we need to send it to fiu okay right then we look at some questions okay now this is your last january question what is the answer for this now we look at all these questions right now okay what's the answer for this we have 10 minutes or 12 minutes what is the answer for this this is your january i need answers now you can follow your notes what is the answer this is your january 2021 question which one of the following was formed under financial transaction reporting act number 6 of 2006 can anybody tell quickly we have so many questions to ask are you listen me no are you if i you answer is if i you a good now let's look at the second question what is the objective of know your customer procedure this is your 2014 question what is objective of know your customer procedure why you need to understand why you need kyc what is the objective right matakane look at prevention of money laundering and terrorism yeah any legal activity 
prevent the financial institution for money laundering and financing other unlawful transactions okay prevent the use of financial institution for money laundering not only money laundering any other financing and other unlawful transaction now i have explained to you what are these unlawful transactions to right remember that also right next one 2016 september right what is the type of information obtained under kyc simple right what is the type of information obtained under kyc tell me what is the kyc information you obtain source of income huh? source of answer so i didn't get it buddha source of income not kya buddha source of income okay okay before that before that what do you need before we ask for the customer contact huh? customers what do you need customer contact details before that also what what are the main main information you need for customer to identify yeah all things are there yes but but what are the main things when you come for an open an account what do you ask him name my nic name name with support with what nic number nic number or passport number or any driving license number right that's a number one then you ask what second one your address now remember if uh, you from your identity you give another addresses so then you have to prove your address how you can prove your address now say from your idt i identity number you put okay c uh, we we put c y kumar identity number i don't know what is that but we'll say uh, 94 206 5677 vo whatever right then they say address they had said 24 uh uh we say uh narahim bitte porello something now you in your form you put uh something else then you ask confirm in your address you need your proof for your present address for that you ask okay can you bring any water bill electricity bill or whatever bill showing your present address you need to present the address what is the third important thing you requesting from the customer address name id card number what is the other important before source of income what is the other important thing you asking come on what is the other important thing you asking from the customer profession you see profession occupation details occupation occupation right what are you asking occupation now i'll tell you the true story about this occupation now you know the sakriti you heard about the sakriti no ara di or sakriti ara customer ge salli hor salli gatte ara the sakriti sakriti sir rahalad so you need to hear about this guy right so sakriti mean the guy who uh, gave lot of interest collecting money illegally right it was situated in uh, it uh, one offices at nugegoda right now is a very this is a true story during that time this kyc is not so much uh, heavily used it right now this uh, sakriti uh taken money from customers and offering higher interest rate almost double the interest rate offered by the banks people people don't know no they will go to him and so they will honor also at the beginning they will honor then what happened the customers asked from where you have the money and all they showed all the fds and all try the he has deposited the money with nsb NSP Nugae Gorda Brand. He said, "Buy with the pop. We buy under Maga with these zero national savings bank. Get it up, right? No gold to buy with the pop. We have a salary there. So build the confidence about the depositors, the people who comes to him. 
right? If all these uh, deposit certificates are correct, exactly, right? Now, the there's an inquiry go against the this uh, Sakriti uh, person, no? So then the uh, the central banks inquire about the National Service Bank. Now, what the National Service Bank need to do? When they open FDs or whatever savings account, we ask all these three things. Name, correct, yes. Address, correct. Then the occupation. You know the, what is the occupation they have put in all in, in NSP? Teacher. Right? Okay. But NSP put all these things. Teacher. And open, open 100,000 million, million FDs every day. Every day. Now, how can a teacher earn maybe 500,000 for even for 100,000 every day to open, is it, uh, open FDs? Can I do? No, I can't. Even for that was a belly get a pair of easy hatter, but I thumb in there one leg. Right now, the questions come to the NSB why you are not report all these things to the FIU? Now, that even now we have a problem. No, we now suddenly find out all these Kudumudalis and all their account is having millions and millions. Now, a lot of criticism come to the banks, no, so, so the, how they maintain without having any job, uh, how they maintain such a big amount, they account. If the apit current, the cadre account, without asking anything, we collect money because we need deposits, no. But we are not thinking about the occupation, right? Now, how? How a teacher deposit such a big amounts? So then we need to be informed to the KYC uh, to the FIU. So if a customer comes regularly deposits like that, usually we need to ask from him where you get the money. He had to tell something. No, then you cross check with your sources of fund at the time of you open the account. You check the KYC. If you are not the taken the KYC, how do you find it out for where you get the money? Right? If something happened at the transaction, then then they are it's finished. That clear neither. So that is the importance of taking KYC. Right? It is very important. Right? The type of information, therefore, you need to get about the customer identification. NIC, passport, driving, because now all these are carry NIC. But still we have some problem. Some people have it, passport is not having the NIC. That's all, right? There are some cases. Addresses and the occupation. Those are the important information we need to collect under KYC. Right? Okay. Now, in 2019, March, question 7, Tell us, what are the main features of financial transaction reporting act? Again, they ask, describe the requirement to of know your customer KYC. Right? Now I think you can answer. Then, uh, why do banks obtain information in know your customer process? Now you see why we need to obtain information. Why do? To see whether his credit worthiness. Right? Okay. Right, we will discuss this one at uh, 3 o'clock with some, some more questions. Right, there are some few questions with this and uh, next Sunday. Uh, and uh,